Hello, are you looking for some fun indoor activities that you can run in a classroom? Maybe your hall has been taken out of use or the weather's too bad and you've got a big group of children in the classroom and you're meant to be doing PE. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you five of some of my favorite indoor classroom activities that you can run with your children. The first game is called Keeper of the Keys. Now, the way this works is you are going to have a, um, you're going to ask everybody to sit in a circle and in the middle is going to be the gatekeeper. So you've got your gatekeeper in the middle and you need to find something loud, so hopefully some a set of keys or something that you can put next to the gatekeeper. Now, you've got everybody else sitting in a circle around the gatekeeper all the way around and you are going to choose one child to come in, try and pick up the keys and get out without the gatekeeper noticing. So the gatekeeper has to keep their head down or blindfolded or whatever it is, and everybody is gonna be um, hitting their feet against the floor to try and create some noise. So they, uh, or they could be clapping or whatever, but they're, um, I like to say where they're rumbling their feet against the floor. And you, you, you can point at one person and they have to go in as sneaky as they can pick up the keys and go back to the area and then you'll ask everybody to stop and then the gatekeeper can take their blindfold off or um, open their eyes and they have to guess who it was that took the keys. Now, if they guess this person and they are correct, then they get to stay as the gatekeeper for one more turn. But if they're wrong and they guess somebody over here, for example, then this person was successful and they get to go in and be the gatekeeper. Really good way to keep people active. Instead of rumbling their feet, you could mix it up and they could be bouncing a basketball on the floor or well, probably not for a classroom, but maybe they could be um, doing some star jumps or something different, just get them moving, get them active, um, but just something to make a little bit of noise, make it difficult for the gatekeeper and hopefully you get a nice flow of different people going into that session. So that could work with just like five or six kids around the outside or you could even have like 30, 40, 50 kids. Depends how, uh, depends what your situation is today. But that's a really good idea. Works really nicely. I've done that quite a few times with my, um, with my last minute classroom session. So hopefully that one works for you. Okay, so the second game is going to be called 21. And the game, aim of this game is not to be the person that does or says 21. So you can have everybody stand in a circle again and the idea is you don't want to be the one to say 21, but you can only say three numbers at a time. So this person might say one, two, three, and then this person says four, next person says five and six, and then by the end it's like 18, and what you, do, you don't want to be the person to say 21. So they might say 19, 20, and then this person has to say 21, because they're just counting as they go around, and if you say 21, then there's a forfeit or um, something, something silly. Don't let them be out because when they're just out, they go get really bored and start misbehaving and stuff. So um, maybe think, oh, you've got to do five star jumps or something like that. Now, what I would do to make this more PE focused, rather than just saying one, two, and three, you might have to do three tuck, you might have to do a tuck jump for every number. So you, you might do one tuck jump, two tuck jumps, three tuck jumps, and then obviously you can only do a maximum of three, then the next person goes. So they then have to do a tuck jump and it, and it goes around. So you're not even allowed to say the numbers. That's a good way of doing it. Um, and then obviously you just carry on around the circle and you try and avoid being the one who says 21. But it's a good little thing. You don't need too much space. You can do that inside, get some active, get some having fun and keep some engaged as well. So um, yeah, I recommend 21 as my second game. Okay, so on to the third game, which is called Don't Flinch. Now, you might have seen this one on social media and different games. Now, um, what you're going to have is people in pairs. So I would just have around the room just different pairs. And let's say these two are working together, these two are working together, and these two are working together. Now, you're going to have a... Well, you could, you could do this in so many different ways. You could just scrunch up a bit of paper. If you've got enough soft balls or some footballs, then you can use those as well. But you, they're gonna have a ball each, and the idea is if you flinch to go and catch the ball, or catch the bit of paper, but they don't throw it, then 
um, then it, you lose a point. But if they throw it and you don't catch it, you lose a point. So you want to make sure you can only get ready to catch it once they've thrown it. Okay, so they might pretend to throw, they might pretend, pretend, and then hopefully the other person just stays still. And then when they actually throw it, then they catch it. Okay, so, um, and what you can do is you can have this as, um, let's say, if you, if, you, if, if you get to five points, then you lose. Now you can have this all the way around the, the, the classroom. And once one pair has lost, once one person's lost, say this person's lost, they flinched um, five times and lost, the, lost all these points. You go, if you lost from League One, you have to go to League Two. Okay, let's say this person lost, they have to go down to League Three. Let's say this person lost, because they're in League 3, there's no other league for them to go to. They have to stay there. Whereas, this person won, so they move up to this pitch. This person won, so they move up to this pitch. Okay, And it means that everyone plays a new person. And it's basically just don't let them flinch. It's just a nice way to make it competitive. Don't worry too much about the competition until they've got the idea of, the, of don't flinch. And like I say, you could do that with a, with a football, and you could just pretend to pass it but don't actually pass it or a bit of paper and pretend to throw it and don't throw it but again it's just something that's related to PE going to keep them engaged and active and that's ultimately what you want you don't want them to have no um, focus whilst you got them all in the classroom and they were expecting to do PE so they can really lose focus and it can um, be a nightmare as I'm sure you're aware so yeah this is a really nice one that I'd recommend doing that was my third game it's called don't flinch the fourth game is called One Knee, and I love this game. It's a really good way to get people engaged. You can do it in small groups, you can do it in larger groups, whatever works for you. Um, but I love to do it where, say, I'm in the middle of a circle, and you've got people on the outside. And if I throw the ball and you don't catch it, then you have to drop to one knee. So imagine I, I throw the ball to this person, they don't catch it, which means they have to drop down to one knee. Okay. Now, once they're on one knee, if they catch it again, if they if you throw it to them and they catch it, they can get back up to two knees. But if they drop it again from one knee, they have to go down to two knees. Okay. And if they drop it again, then they have to sit onto their bottom. And then if they um, miss it again, maybe they have to lie on their back. And then if they miss it again, they have to lie on their front, okay? And you just keep, keep it going, be imaginative with it. But you're trying to keep it quick. Don't let them hold on to the ball for ages because the other kids will get bored. So you throw it to them, they throw it back. And you might start pretending to throw this way, but actually like throw it over your head to see if they're, if they're still paying attention and all that sort of stuff. But it's a, it's a good game, keeps kids in, engaged. If you've got larger numbers, then I would recommend probably splitting this into, like if you've got over... 15 children, I'd probably split this into two circles, maybe get a teaching assistant or one of the more sensible kids to be in the middle um, of, of both circles and then you would take yourself out. But if, they, if you're just doing one circle, I don't see any problem with you being in the middle, but you want to keep it fast flowing. Um, again, this could just be done with a bean bag, a tennis ball, a softball, a bit of paper scrunched up, just something to keep the kids engaged and active. So that's my fourth game. Uh, it's called uh, One Knee. Now onto my fifth game or fifth activity, and this one I'm just going to call Dance Party. And what you're going to do is just get get a, um, get some songs on and let them just dance. Uh, and you basically just go play different music, get them dancing. Maybe they can create a little routine if they want to. But overall, it's just just have a little bit of a dance party. Okay, and you might give away points for the best dances and all that sort of stuff. Um, obviously, you're inside, you're in a classroom, you don't want to disrupt other classes. So maybe they have to do silent dancing or. Um, you know, don't put the music up too loud and all that sort of stuff. But it's it's a good way just to get kids moving because what's your find is once you put the music on and they find their beat and they start enjoying it and it's music that they like, they'll start dancing and they'll start having a, having a nice time. You create this like dance party atmosphere. It could create a really nice um, little entertainment session for your, for your lesson. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely give that one a go. That's called dance party. Just just have some fun with it. Be imaginative. Put on some good music and get the kids dancing.
So they are my five top classroom PE games. I've actually done another video on this, which got so many views, I decided to do this part two video. So if you haven't seen that one already, please do check it out. It should be somewhere around this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed today. If you have, please do like, comment and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.